Hey guys, the weather is bad and somehow it feels like Christmas today. It's time to configure my Ace 33 ME, an electric self-launch glider with 18 meters of wingspan. On the way. It is such a big honor and a dream of mine to, to do all this. Thank you also so much for watching my videos and thanks to Alexander Schleicher to make this cooperation possible. So let's get in and yeah, start the configuration. It's finally time to configure my new AS33ME, which I will fly in Uvalde at the next World Gliding Championships in the United States. Yeah, today I'm here with Patrick and we will configure the glider at the computer. Have a look at some pieces here, some fabrics for the interior, for the belts and some colors and so on. So we will go through the process of ordering a new glider today. Yeah, let's get started. Let's jump right in with our new configurator tool in 3D. So today you are very fortunate as one of the first guys to see your glider in 3D before leaving the facility. Wow. So we are diving right into the ME because that's the glider you, you choose, the yeah. electric one. You have the option of a pure glider. Yeah. I think nobody will buy a pure glider. I, I think we, we <laughs> sold two. <laughs> okay. But, but the, the funny thing about the 33 is that even the pure glider is registered as a motor glider. Ah, so okay. there is no number plate oh, okay. anymore for the 33. <laughs> okay. And then you have the option with the sustainer yeah. and the new electric self-launch version, which yeah. I prefer because I am able to travel by glider more, do some expeditions perhaps in countries where you can't or where you don't have a tow plane and so on. So it's just much more freedom for me. And yeah, I also like the electric philosophy without fuel and the fuel smell and so on. Yeah. So I think that's the, the coolest option available at the moment. <laughs> yeah, it is. And it's a, it's a good choice because you're, it's not only the, the fuel smell or anything that is going off with it, but also the maintenance and the daily routine with such a glider is so much easier and allows to sleep 15 minutes more a day. So <laughs> that helps also a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Let's jump right into it. So. We are configuring the 33. You, you can see it right in its 18 meter configuration. Mm -hmm. And normally we just would start now with the exterior because you have a, a few exterior options. And here you can see you have the retractable tailwheel, you have the anti-collision light and you have the bug wiper garage. Yeah. So I would go for the retractable tailwheel because I really like the better aerodynamics for the competition when flying a world gliding championship you want to have a glider with really low drag so i think that's the very important option yeah. and of course you need bug wipers for these gliders these days especially here in germany and europe it's so important for the anti-collision light there we have an own option with a canopy flasher that's why i will use this but of course it's also a great option to have it installed in the vertical stabilizer it's not blocking the view and the canopy and so on so yeah. it, of course it's a clean version and it's something which doesn't add any drag so yeah that's but, right and um, because we have some in product there yeah <laughs> i prefer my totally understandable <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah then the, yeah. the the fun part of the whole configuration begins because now we're going into the design of your glider yeah. um, unfortunately we only have like our standard designs in our configurator to make it more easy more simple for the clients but yeah we can try to use the standard design of yeah. course i have some ideas to make this glider very special yeah <laughs> but that's something you can have a look at the aero in friedrichshafen where we will display this new glider and um, so make sure to come there and see my new glider design my new glider for the first time um mid of april yeah 
Yeah, so, okay. so in the end you can decide of your, of your design stripes in here, you have like those two stripes, that is our new 2020 standard double curve design mm -hmm. that we adapted to, to all the new gliders and you can choose two colors for the two different stripes. At the moment, I think it's a red color and a gray. Yeah, it's a, it's a darkish red. Looks already great. Yeah, and then we, we could add a darkish gray yeah. on the bottom. Now that's that would kind, for, kind of fit your colors. Yeah, for, for, for the standard design, I would choose this one. What's next? The Yeah, for, first you, you also can decide ah. if you want to have the the 33 design typing now it's with the es but uh, yeah. you can choose if you want just a 33 or with the me or without and also you could choose in the end if you want to have the me logo in mm -hmm. the glider or if you don't want to okay but since you have a beautiful <laughs> own, own design, design <laughs> uh, we will skip this part <laughs> yeah, yeah. next would be the the canopy color so you can decide be between the new or the standard white transparent canopy then we have the green color, the blue color, and the brownish color. Okay, there, that's, that's really a hard decision for filming so that you can have nice videos. It's better not to have a blue or green color. I flew here the AS33ME prototype, which has a brown color, I think, yeah. and the videos looked also amazing. So I think I would choose between the clear color all the brown. Br but brown is like for your filming it's kind of an ND filter. <laughs> so and yeah it's like the, the sunglasses which are also brown so it is yeah. for the contrast it is better. Um, so I will we'll just try the, the brown color because okay. I think it looks also a little yeah. bit better for the design at the end yeah. and perhaps it is not getting as warm in the cockpit. I don't know if there are any other advantages. Right now it's just the, the contrast in the end. So. Okay. So next would be the warning signs on your winglet or the, the tail of your glider. But since you have your, your own designs for this too, we can just show you the standard version would be this variant on the back and on the winglets. And here in the configurator, this color of the winglet and tail design changes with your main stripe design. So it mm -hmm. kind of fits but you can choose which color you want to have on there. Okay. Then we would go for the, the registration marks. You can choose your, your font that you want to have. We have mm -hmm. some standard fonts and all the fonts come in, in an italic style with five degrees. Oh. And you can also choose all the colors that you imagine. Yeah. And here in the configurator, we only have some colors like as a standard color, but in the end you can get every RAL color that you can imagine. So. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah, here I would stick to the modern AS. This is the, this the italic version. Yeah, the italic version. I think that yeah. looks cool. And uh, perhaps just a dark gray color. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So next would be your competition sign. Yeah, <laughs> the green color doesn't. Yeah, fit it, to it doesn't fit design. too good now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a dark gray. Uh, Did it? Yeah. So and we, I think we we're going with Sierra Lima or Sierra Fox. Hmm. Sierra Fox. What, what, what do, do you what think? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Is it better Sierra Lima or Sierra Fox? Um, I don't know exactly, but yeah, I would go. go for Sierra Fox yeah. at the moment. Perfect. Oh. No, Sierra Fox. Foxtrot. Yeah. Yeah, that looks more like yeah, fitting my into glider. It. <laughs> uh, right? So you can yeah, make some other stripes in the front yeah. and make a custom winglet design, but yeah. And of course also the uh, registration sign that I need to change <laughs> to fit yeah. to Sierra Fox, but I will have a look what's available. Yeah, so right. now we we went through all the design parts that are kind of important. Mm -hmm. So we would go into the interior right now. Yeah, perfect. Let's continue. So in the interior, this would be like the, the, the standard version that we have in here. Mm -hmm. With the fabric. Uh, with the fabric, yeah. But you could also go with leather. Yeah. Yeah, there I think we'll go with leather or some Alcantara leather yeah. or so. Um, well, yeah, since, since more we're... stealth, darker, yeah. grayish, 
for black we, design. But yeah, we can we can go with a very dark stone. Yeah. In here, this and is the also just perhaps darker if it's possible. Yeah. yeah. Black. Uh, yeah, we we only have like some okay, some colors yeah. in there okay. because in the end you yeah. you still have to configure that on your own with the interior company mm. that you want to to get everything. Yeah. So we just show it here as an example because it feels always better if you can design your interior also with the outside yeah, and everything. It, it feels more like yours then. So. Yeah. And I've seen here you have some fabric test pieces as well. Yeah. So as a customer, you can have a look at these. But yeah. of course, it's good to be in contact with the manufacturer of the interior. I think they are pleased. Yeah too well known available yeah and yeah there are so many options color options thread options alcantara and should we take a look at everything for the interior i would go for some really standard grayish dark color not too special not too much of a red in there um so most likely if i go for the for the leather i would go with asphalt or black yeah i think but i'm at the moment i'm not sure if i will choose some alcantara leather with, yeah. with these holes in here or not and so on but that's a new video project to um to design the interior and yeah. to have a look at the manufacturer so yeah. but there's, there, there's also we have a lot of clients that make like a, a Combin combination from from alcantara and then the, so in the inside alcantara outside the real leather and just... that's also my preferred option for now to make a design like this and then perhaps have here some lighter grayish color somewhere in here in between or also yeah. the the stitching um yeah but we will have a look at this later on as well yeah perfect and then of course you also have here the belts yeah which have a specific color yeah i really hate this color yeah I it's, hate, it's, uh, that's an all, all gliders but yeah. i don't like it it's like the, the bluish that's true yeah. yeah i would really like to replace this in my industry <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it just makes the glider older than it is that is a cool color, but it That's must fit to all the other exterior and interior design. Of course, the black is the standard, yeah. which is no mistake at all. And then here, perhaps one of these grayish colors. Let's see which color I choose for the interior, and then I can select yeah. these belts as well. But it's, it's yeah. nice to have these samples and see it in in real light or... Yeah, yeah. but, but those, <laughs> those, are, those are only the, the Gardringer colors. Okay. So those are the Gardringer belts, but you could also, if you want to have the, the short belts okay. that, for example, Porsche uses in, in their ah. cars, but that's for you to choose. So. But, in the, but the standard are the Gardringer. Gardringer. Yeah. Okay. Is there any advantage <laughs> to it? It's, okay. just, it's just for your liking. So if you like the, the Schrotmoor or the Gardringer, that's... Okay. Yeah. And then we also have here the Rahl... I don't know how you called it, color yeah. codes. As we saw here in the configurator, you can choose the color codes. And of course, there's also here a sample of the colors which are available. I also like these, these special colors, like I used on my LS3, for example. What color, where is it? I think somewhere here. Yeah, this white alum aluminum with a special effect and so on. It's, um, I think, really cool. Yeah. And of course, perhaps let's see if it will get a red or a yellow color. And yeah, yeah. let's see. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, so when we're done with all the interior parts that are very important, we also can go to the avionic. So all your instruments like altimeter and vario and everything you want to you can you can choose here for now we only have standard options because it's always like very hard to to get the newest updates and the newest price list and everything so we just took a standard avionic catalog and just put it into this yes yeah. this configurator to just make it a bit more visual and in the end, it's, it's pretty nice because it works in the way that ah, if you touch something, 
yeah. or if it doesn't fit into the instrument panel it turns red so you immediately see what fits and what doesn't fit into your instrument panel and also you can put all the battery choice and yeah. the all the buttons and everything that you need you can put it into here and have a nice overview of your glider on the first configuration time and yeah, you perfect. can go home and get pictures of everything when you arrive. So of course I would stick to my own Steve Line Nav which yeah. is a seven inch screen in the middle but it is nearly the same size as the Alex 9070 which yeah. is here so we can use this as a placeholder. Yeah. Um, then one thing I honestly don't like but it's the German thing we we need to have a compass in there which takes some space but yeah that's that these are the regulations the rules so we also need one of these and um, if it is somehow possible i would add two more round 57 millimeter gorges here for a mechanical barometer on the left hand side somewhere and yeah, yeah the winter this uh, one here yeah okay no, it's here uh, and perhaps we can put the yeah okay. yeah we just speed indicator yeah and on top yeah and the barometers on the bottom yeah yeah then of course we need some way these this emergency switch yeah and then on the right hand side i would also like to add something and flam display so also from avionics and um, of course I will stick to the air traffic display as well like in my LS3 and yeah perhaps uh, let's exchange the the compass and the flam display yeah. or even the the altimeter with a flam display yeah okay uh, but it's yeah it doesn't matter too much it's the same size yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. And I had a look at some of your photos on the web page and also on my videos, which I made with the A34 yeah. and A33 ME. And there, um, I think you have the red emergency button on the right hand yeah. side. I think that's more intuitive if you really need to cut off something. And these rotary switches are below the LX somewhere between mm -hmm. LX and so on. But yeah. these are all things we need to discuss yeah, more we, in detail. We can, we can move the LX to the top. Up, and then somewhere there. Yeah. And then you have some more fire warning lights and so on, which also yeah. fit in there. But yeah, all in all, I think that's my setup, which I'm going for. But it's, yeah, it's great to have the possibility to visualize it so quick and uh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. In, in the end, after we configure the glider as you wish with the avionics, everything goes into the company. People really look into those, those drawings and tell us if it's possible, if it's not possible, if we can save some space somewhere. And so in the end, after one week, you have the information if everything runs well or not. And there are also a lot of extra options if you want to have them that we can do. Like we could put in a USB plug be besides your backrest. Ah. So the charging cable for your phone in the, in the side pocket cool. would, would come from the back and not from the front from your panel. So you're not having it dangling around your knee. So you're having it coming from the back and just going into your pocket and you can charge your phone and cool. stuff like that. So there's a, a lot of possibilities. You can have a router in your glider for internet access <laughs> and everything you want. So yeah. there's a thousand possibilities to, to do yeah. here. It's also an interesting option to have an LTE antenna. Yeah. I think you have somehow the option perhaps to put yeah. it into the gear door. Or... Yeah. yeah. That's something I need to think about as well. Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of clients that want to have like a dedicated router with a SIM card in there for the LAX or whatever. So you don't have to connect the Wi-Fi of your phone to your LX before every flight to get all the weather data and yeah. all the maps. So the glider always gets their maps from their own SIM card. That's, that's in the end an easier solution, but it costs and it's yeah. more weight and you put stuff in the glider even more. So it's... Uh, Mm, yeah, 
Yeah. It's a choice that you have to make. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I will think about it. Yeah. 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 And also this this red button is not doing anything more than the main switch of the of the glider itself of, of the uh, engine instrument. Mm -hmm. But we have to put it in because like firefighters or policemen that come to your glider after landing out, they don't know how to switch off an, an engine and motor. So they're just hitting the big red button that they know okay. from everywhere, from every machine. It's just an, an easier way to make your safety accessible. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's also good for the pilot if he is really in a really bad situation. It's easier to just press on this button yeah. than find this smaller one. Yeah. That's true. Looks like a machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah to totally, totally, totally. Would there be an option to put the compass somewhere on top of the yeah. panel yeah. cover? We, we also uh, have okay. like two different compasses that you could put on top of the panel cover to, okay. to not have it integrated into your main panel. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. then there would be an option to, to have one more air control display or altimeter display yeah. and so on. Which yeah might be also interesting. Yeah, that would that would be not a problem. That is that is possible. Yeah. What else do we have, or are we finished now with the configurator? In the, in the end, <laughs> this is all the all the visual stuff. So yeah. everything that you can see is uh, integrated into this four button menu in here. Yeah. But we also have like some options that you can't see directly on the glider that we are not yeah. visually showing you. That we are only showing you in the menu. So but what? are these options like yeah. the, the paint options to have perhaps clear coat to have vinyl wrap or yeah. we, we can show you in here and here you ah. have like the the option list of the rest of the things that you need yeah. but can't see on the first glance so we are starting like with the 15 meter wingtips Th yeah, this, this is like a thing that you could yeah. could could show on a configurator yeah. but if, if you see it in a in a whole beauty it looks even better in 18 meters so we stick to the 18 yep. meter and make it just an option <laughs> 15 meter there i think with the a33 me it's quite heavy already it is, and yeah. if we have a less uh, wing area then it's the wing loading is even more heavy or yeah. it's, it's uh, bigger so i think for this glider I'm not completely sure if it makes sense of course okay. it costs a lot and also with the hg29 i made perhaps three or four flights with 15 meters even if we have 15 meter wingtips yeah so at the moment i would just go for the 18 meter because it's yeah. more glide ratio more fun and fits better to this glider yeah totally totally yeah also i i've flown the 33 es and the me a lot here in the company and i think i made once one launch with 15 meters because of course, for competitions, it's great to have this option, yeah. but with a heavier weight with the electric system, perhaps yeah, it's yeah. not the best. And Yeah, also for record hunting or ah, stuff yeah, like that, it's, <coughs> it's, it's really good yeah, to be very sense. heavy, short wings mm -hmm. and be fast. But for yeah. our daily flying or 80 meter competitions, it's just uh, the one thing. But it is certified, the A33ME also with a 15 meter. Yeah, 15 meter so, okay. and it's with no problem possible to self-launch we tested the or we had to test the self-launch capability of the 15 mm. meters and you have to make like five launches to have a medium starting position mm. and it it took off i think after 215 meters so oh. which is really really good which is so if working. i want to make some world records somewhere on the yes world, then perhaps i have the option to yeah. retrofit it somehow yeah and uh, never say never <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so the next point would be the acrylic paint of the whole glider which is a it, important part it's nearly a must i would say yeah, these it days is. we know that the really old steel coat yeah. was good like the very old bells and so on but later on um i don't know why but the color changed yeah. because, perhaps even because of some restrictions yeah and you get cracks after some years 10 15 years or so um only with the uv light and yeah, the age so yeah. i would definitely go for the acrylic paint um yeah i think we we <laughs> in the in the last years since i'm here we only delivered one glider without acrylic paint it was like kind of raw finished the glider and then the customer took it but it's the standard option and everyone takes it that's also a, a reason why the 35 
will not have this option. It will be the standard. The 35 will be standard in acrylic paint. So because everybody takes it, it's like, why have a big option list if a, anybody takes it? So yeah, that's true. Yeah. So then the oxygen, do you want a... Of course, I yeah. also want to fly in the yeah. mountains, so I need a mounting option for the oxygen bottle. Yeah. The, what do you call it, the trim weight? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's also good if there are some other pilots flying. Yeah. But you have the option. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Then we have like like the the grounding material. If you want to pin your glider to a ground in France and everywhere you go, if you're going to to make a Europe trip again yeah. with your glider, it's maybe a good option to to have those fittings in the outer wing to just pin your glider down on every airfield that you want to go. So you don't need to make a, a rope. Yeah, uh, above the, the winglet or even the yeah. slap um, you have yeah. something to screw in. Yeah, you have it. like a, a hole in the underside of the of the outer wings yeah. and you get from us like um, fittings that you're just screwing in and then you can just bring your rope through the hole and it's not going over your wing and, or over the winglet yeah. and not over the rudder. So it's just fitted on the on the lower side, which is very easy and it sits very close to the to the outer wheels mm -hmm. so the openings of the of your covers for your glider are fitting perfectly to the position where those ropes go through them okay. so it's awesome. even open for the for the wingtip wheels so you can just go the go with the rope through it perfect so do you want to have yes of course. <laughs> I, I, I want to do yeah. more travel by glider trips in the future and i think it is a huge improvement for this uh, new glider for the a 33 yeah. me to have the self-launch option yeah of course totally yeah then <laughs> do you want like the pilot drainage system <laughs> uh, well where does it drain below the um, fuselage or, yeah, yeah. Uh, directly yeah. Um, I closed this option at the HG29, so I yeah. won't use this at the moment. But yeah. of course, it's something you should also care about, care about the environment with the plastic bags, for example, and so yeah. on. So um, it's good to have this option, but I don't yeah, use it at the moment. Okay. So yeah. we won't use it. It's just one more hole and drag. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, the, the perfectionist in me says, <laughs> yeah, I would cover it with a sticker. <laughs> yeah, and if you if you're not using like the the systems for for this type of of usage, and you're using only bags or stuff like that, then you won't ever need it, and then it's still just a yeah. just a tube that is coming like out of your glider in front of your your legs so it's yeah. yeah so then there would be like the cg optimization for your pilot weight yeah honestly i don't know where this cg is at the at the new glider like this so i don't know of course it would make sense but i would say we would just wait and see yeah it, de it depends it depends on on how much you weigh like the the 33 me right now i think has the perfect cg on the gliders that we produce at around 85 to 90 kilograms so yeah. if you're close to this area yeah. with a parachute then it doesn't make sense to optimize it but if you're very light like 70 kilogram with yeah. or 75 with a parachute or 110 it would really make sense to optimize it but if you're like in a, in a standard weight area, then it doesn't make that much sense. But maybe for a World Gliding Championship in Uvalde, it, <laughs> it would be good to look at this. Some... Just put it in the trim yeah. compartment there. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think this, this option is very important for heavier pilots to yeah. have some weight in the fin or something. Like yes, yeah. yeah. or even lighter pilots. Or oh, very light. Yeah. That's, uh, but... okay, yeah. so. And well, then the, the last system that we ask you for is, do you want a trailer charging set? That's a very interesting question uh, because you also need to charge the batteries. But I think it's it's a good option to have to yeah. charge in the trailer because I store my glider usually in the trailer. So um, yeah, also for the lifetime of the batteries, it's good to, yeah. to charge them just before the flight, I think, and so on. So of course, I want to have this option. Yeah, perfect. So in, in this trailer charging system, you have like two parts. One part is coming from us to have like an, a larger cable for your batteries. 
to, to charge it in, inside of the trailer and there is coming an electricity box from the trailer manufacturer. Hindelberger Cobra, yeah, for example. Yeah, yeah, for example. They are putting in like a fuse box in front of your trailer and then a power outlet that you can just connect. And then from this fuse box, the, everything goes directly into your glider. So yeah. everything is, is safe, Perfect. it's easy to make. It's just a, a plug that you have to put in and then the glider charges. So yeah. this option is, is very neat to, to use if you're having it in the trailer. Uh, a if lot you of don't have a hangar space for the complete glider, then I think yeah. if you're at competitions and so on, it's, yeah. it's, it's uh, also a good option for the winter. If you're having like a, the idea of flying wave and it's very cold, you can just pre-charge your batteries the night before and then they are warm. They are at, at the perfect working temperature yeah. and then you, you have a, a ready to fly system on the next day so it's a very easy to use thing and in the winter almost every glider is de-rigged so it, it works perfectly and i also have some nice ideas to put solar panels on the trailer so that i can charge a battery which is also stored in the trailer during day when i'm flying so i can use this big battery to charge the glider at night yeah. but there are also some video projects and ideas available so yeah. stay tuned for this also in the future yeah we are, we are right now offering kind of the option to take care for the clients of such systems so we are working with a few of those battery manufacturers to to work together to have like a, a movable power bank a big yeah. movable power bank with solar panels because in some airfields in France or somewhere else, you're not having everywhere a plug on the airfield. So those are the systems that are very easy. They are lighter than fuselage batteries that you have to take out. Out, They are like 10 kilograms lighter, but can recharge your whole glider after a day. So this solution is going to be a, an easy solution and you can reuse it as a solar power plant and everything like that. So it's it's easier and better for the environment if you're just using it like that. There are some nice ideas available and yeah, we will see what it brings in the future. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And those would be like all the options that the glider has. Mm -hmm. Like we have the interior, we have the avionics, we have the exterior. Um, and let's just... Yeah, so a lot of options to choose. Now I need to focus more on the design, which I really want to have, some special design and also to have a look more at the interior design with an interior manufacturer. And then I think it will be an amazing dream machine. <laughs> yeah. 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 We Very saw nice. a few sneak peeks, so subscribe to the channel to see his new design. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then we can also take a look at your Ooh. motor. Oh. All the parts that fit to the ME motor are connected in here. And you can see the, the whole glider in its full beauty in yeah. the end in here so awesome. <laughs> yeah this is like everything you are waiting for <laughs> yes <laughs> and i'm waiting for the season as well <laughs> the weather yeah. to get better <laughs> yeah well okay then yeah it's time to have a look at the factory yeah today as well for another video how the ace 33 is manufactured what are the steps how long does it take and that's a really long journey I would say and it's a lot of labor a lot of handwork to do and so yeah check out the next video as well and then i will see you in the next one cheers